Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey. Here with another review for Power. This is season six, the final season. Praise, praise Jesus. Um, this is episode four. Why is Tommy still alive? It's the name of the episode. I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Everyone who commented in last week's review slash recap. Thank you guys so much. I really, really enjoyed the conversation um, down in the comment section. If you are new to my channel and you'd love um, what you see, I personally would love to have you as a member of the tribe. I know the honeybees would love to have you. Hit that subscription um, button as well as the notification bell next to it. Also, um, give me that thumbs up. Everybody knows that's like saying, hey, Miss Honey, as well as comment down below. It goes down in the DM. <laughs> okay, you guys. It is a great Sunday to sleep in, so I am going to knock this review out for you. I am going to shake you to your core and then rock you gently back to sleep so that you can get as much rest and relaxation from Sunday as possible. Now let's talk about this episode. First and foremost, we really only have three major players um, from this whole cast in this episode basically ghost tasha and tommy and all of the many auxiliary characters that are tucked in each one of their storylines first let us go ahead and talk about tasha tasha um as you guys know went ahead and bartered with tate and um garrity to get all of the paperwork, a lease, a space for lease, everything she needed to start a daycare and have her own business. Of course, now we all know Tasha doesn't love kids like that, but she's going to use this daycare to launder Tommy's money. Now, <clears throat> we see where she's in the space, and it's kind of half put together. You know, it's, it's coming along. It's coming along nicely. A uh, very handsome gentleman, Quentin Q, comes in, and he's got a four-year-old daughter. The mother is out of the picture. Apparently, she was on drugs or is on drugs, and so he is uh, working construction. He's gone during the day, and he needs um, a nice daycare, preferably in his neighborhood, to take care of his daughter and he just wanted to check it out looks like a nice space um everything about him to me screams narc even his beautiful pectorials they scream narc to me his dark luscious delicious areolas they scream narc to me but they don't scream narc to tasha and that's really why we're here okay so they get to talking back and forth bantering and and um i think Oh, they went to exchange numbers. She asked him for his number. He went to take the number, gave her a little, gave her a little hand touch, you know, just let her know, hey, I see you. I see you. Hmm? I see you. Okay. And I don't know what I might want to do with you, but I feel like it's something. Okay, wink, wink, hint, hint. I was like, Nark. Um so they ended up he ended up coming back by and by this time tasha had just done so much more to the space and i was like she just gets a lot done in heels and a sweater i mean she be dressed to the nines baby but she do not break a sweat when she in there working and all this that and the third i was like okay so tasha you open the daycare and you got it full on like she's got it full on running he comes to the back he wants to take her for a drink and she and for whatever reason she doesn't want to go they end up, bada bing, bada boom, she got wine in her desk. Um, they end up kissing. They both, you know, she hiding the puss. Her man gone, Silver is gone. She ain't been with James and I don't know when. You know, and, and, and she needs some, some, you know, some adjustments. 
okay? All right, she wants to feel good. Make me feel good, Daddy. But she stops him, gets his shirt off just so we can see that pictorial area. I was like, pip, 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 pip. Bam, narc. Fine. Oh, he fine. He good looking. But in a very narcish kind of way. She stops him and tells him, you know, it's very complicated what's going on with her. And uh, she already mentioned James and the situation with that, but not really in detail. She don't want to talk too much about that. Let's not get involved in it. I want to do things differently this time. So let me, let me just, let me just pace myself back. So she didn't go through with it. Well, he was like, you know what? Let me take you to dinner. I was like, girl, <laughs> yeah, he definitely a nerd. Okay. First of all, he stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then when you stopped him, he didn't get mad and call you out your name. He didn't get all salty. Okay. And call you a tease. But instead, he want to take you to dinner. Oh, he's a narc. <laughs> oh, he's a narc. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's a narc or a unicorn. That's one or the other. Either way. I mean, you got to keep your eye on it. So, <clears throat> Um, later on, we see where James comes storming in. A daycare center, Tasha? Really? You didn't think they wasn't going to tell me what you was up to? What's the problem? What's the problem, James? Tasha can't have nothing nice. Huh? Tasha can't, can't make no money for herself. Huh? Why is it that everything she does, you putting it down and belittling it? After, even though all she did for y'all entire marriage, for the most part, I mean, she didn't support you going straight at first. She did not support that at all. But for the most part, Tasha been there for you. Tasha been a rider for you in everything she has tried to do. Everything that she has tried to do. If she say grace, it ain't good enough. Okay? It, nothing she does is good enough. Everything is beneath her. So what exactly is your idea of what Tasha needs to be doing? Hmm, I'd like to hear that. Instead of you putting everything down, why don't you get a girl some suggestions as to what she should be doing? I mean, your life is going swimmingly. Certainly, you are the perfect person to give advice. Huh? You said what now? Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> the guy comes in, sees Tasha and James. She, uh, you know, uh, smoothes and goes on outside and everything and just tries to cover it up. Meanwhile, James sees him, gives him the old one-eyed squint, you know, like, yeah, I got my good eye on you. So Tasha trying to keep all of that real low, real copacetic. Meanwhile, she done got a phone call. She done heard. That's why James comes storming in there. She done heard that, that James trying to pull all the money out of Raina's trust. And he uh, forged her signature. And she went down there and used her own doggone signature. Okay. And, and, and put the kibosh on that. That's why he's storming in there. He's storming in there because how dare you get in the middle of what I... Why are you taking money out of my baby's account? Huh? You're doing it. Queen's Bridge Project supposed to be for her. All of this stuff, ain't none of this what Raina wanted. What Raina wanted was me to have my own business and be successful in it. I was like, both of y'all need to calm down talking about what Raina wanted. Did nobody talk to Raina? Did nobody have a relationship with Raina? Tariq tried to act like he's just so lonely without his twin. When he pushed Raina around and practically abused her before she died. Because she was all in his business. When he was running around with Canaan. Okay, did nobody care about raining? We Raina, we all know that. So let's just calm down acting like we all know what Raina wanted. All right? Let's move forward. Anyway, she put the kibosh on that. And then we see Tommy. Now, Tommy got several problems. One is the fact that he don't have his building secured properly. Now, we know that because um, Tariq has come up with a scheme to get more drugs by sneaking in the back window of Tommy's warehouse. Now, I'm not sure how you got millions of dollars and uh, of, of money and drugs and you don't have your, your crawl spaces locked. I mean, everybody must know that you this super huge drug dealer and will kill anybody that break in because why else would you have your windows and your doors and stuff open freely for people to come and go as they want to and it's supposed to be your honeycomb hideout but that's fine that's fine we're gonna talk about to read anyway tommy got a problem his mama's house getting fumigated and she over there at his house at his loft the one that he shared with holly and also killed her in okay uh with keisha now 
Okay, Keisha is living there, her and, and Cash and the mama there. Okay, so he got to get home. He got to get home and see what's going on with this because by the time he get there, it could be hair parts and skin and <laughs> fingernails and eyeballs everywhere. Because women, especially uh, mothers and uh, girlfriends, mm -mm, uh -uh, he got to monitor that situation. He trying to get his mama straight. He trying, he hoping that Keisha can keep her straight. Everything copacetic here. Everything copacetic here. We cool. We cool. Okay, goodbye. So. We also see Keisha have this experience where her and Cash are living in Thomas' neighborhood. Cash come in, and he has been in a fight. Evidently, he was bullied. I don't know this neighborhood. I don't know the boys in the neighborhood. And they, they, you know, they jumped on me and took my book bag. He got a busted lip, looked like a busted nose, too. And she looking at him, what happened to you, boy? I was like, first of all, he's already been abused. So go ahead and bring it down a notch with your energy level. Now, Tommy Mom will tell her not to do nothing rash. But she was like, come on, we finna go down here right now. Don't nobody put their hands on my baby. And she marched down there in high heel boots and tights. And apparently she kicked some children's behinds and got his book bag back too. Now, mind you, all of this makes Tommy's mom like her. But at the same time, she feel like... She got a son. She gonna always put her son before you. She bad news. She saying bad news is Holly was. Now, also, everybody keep bringing up Holly. Everybody keep bringing up Holly. Holly couldn't cook. You know, uh, you better than Holly. Okay? Next week, we gonna get to see... Um, uh, Tasha bring up Holly to Keisha. So this Holly thing ain't gonna die. Now, just as she was about to ask her some questions about Holly, Tommy's mama about Holly, that's when Cash came in with the busted lip. But let's go back to Tommy. Now, Tommy um, was is getting an extra, extra large shipment. that He's got to go and pick that shipment up. Okay, but Ghost has made arrangements to kind of hold that shipment up thanks to Jason. But we gonna talk about it. <clears throat> So, um, just as they were about to go pick up this huge shipment, him and him and all all of his gang, they realized that there's a gas main break and no one could come in or out. So they used the ambulance that they used for the Alicia Menez um, escape or kidnapping, whatever. And they decide they're going to take that down to the pier to get their drugs, okay? Because everybody gets out of the way for ambulances, right? Mm-hmm. So, as they're coming through, we see Ghost is looking. And he is checking them out. All right. And uh, it's a great scheme. Tommy feels confident about it. But the minute he see, um, go sees them, he takes off running. And you're wondering what is going on here. Okay. What is really happening here? Meanwhile, Tommy got a whole nother problem. He got a whole nother situation going on. Because he goes over to see the Italians. And he talked to the Italians because he got so much weight coming in. He want to talk to them about this distribution. Why don't y'all become a part of my distribution line? You know what I'm saying? I can trickle down these dollars to you, right? And they were like, no, no, no. We got a great distributor. Who is your distributor? Listen, don't worry about all that. That's a secret. I'm saying my product is primo. This is what Tommy's saying. And the guy was like, uh, my pro product is primo. Tommy said, let me see it. So when the guy shows it to him, it is a bottle of his own drugs. He was like, wait a daggum minute. These are my drugs. How you get my drugs? He was like, I, I cannot tell you that. I can't tell you as a friend of Canaan or a, 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 a black kid about this high. And the guy's like, uh, sounds familiar. He was like, okay, no problem. Let me tell you something. That is my godson. I don't want you doing business with him. Don't you do nothing else with him and, and me and you going to be straight, right? Now, mind you, Tommy and I already did a couple of things in the Italians organization, including killing the head of the Italians, his own godson. So, don't come in here telling me what to do. All right. Now, Tariq done broke in and he done got the drugs and he done stacked up, filled up his bag with the drugs. I was just like, Tariq, this poor, poor form. Well, um, 
Tommy go right up there, straight away, straight away, break him down, find the drugs. He just got him in a in a knapsack, thrown in a, thrown in the bottom drawer somewhere. You know, it ain't no big deal. I mean, I mean, it's just thousands and thousands of dollars worth of illegal drugs. Like, why would I tuck them away quietly? Why would I hide them anywhere? Meanwhile, why hasn't Tariq bought himself a car? I don't understand that. He could have got a senior college student to go and buy the car for him, buy a car cash. He got money. He should have been a, got his driver's license. Like, why you ain't got stuff hid off in the trunk of a car somewhere? Like, why do you have stuff all tucked away in your dorm room? But anyway, Tommy come and find it. And he does the same thing Ghost does. Shame on you, Tariq. You never do this again. I promise you'll never do this again. And Tariq is like, I promise I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. You can trust me. And uh, Tommy was like, okay, cool. Cool, cool. Takes the bag of drugs and leaves. Well, Tariq goes to see the Italian. And the Italian lets him have it. Puts his head down hard on the bar. Ah, what have you gotten me into? You think I didn't know that you was ghost son and Tommy's godson? You think I don't know what's going on? And Tariq is like, oh, no, my, nobody knows. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm solo dolo. Like, no, you don't have to worry about that. And the, and the guy was like, you know what? I like you. I like the cut of your jib. Go ahead and get me double, triple what you already gave me. Okay? And we can work this out. Well, when Tariq Lee, um, the, the guy, the two guy, two Italians talking, they were like, why, why don't we just snuff him out? He going to be a liability. He was like, no, no, no. Don't nobody tell me who I work with. One, talking about Tommy, and two, let's see how far this can go. Let's see how much we can get out of this little dude before we do actually have to snuff him out. I was like, Tariq, Tariq, Tariq. I mean, you so smart, you stupid. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I'm, you, you did all that talking and walking and riding with Canaan. And what did you actually learn? You ain't flipping. You ain't flipping nothing. All you're doing is making money and spending it. You ain't storing up. You ain't driving. You know what I'm saying? Like, you not increasing your net worth at all. So, what, what, <sighs> anyway, let's talk about goals. So, Ghost has been seeing Angela. He sees her everywhere. He sees her in the morning after he gets out of the shower. She laying on the bed. And this ain't regular Angela. This old uh, inner Angela. This his inner Angela. And his inner Angela is full of guilt. Why Why haven't you killed Tommy yet? Tommy killed me, but he's still alive. I don't get that. You, you, you're not really following through on anything, Ghost. You were supposed to do the, the Queen's Child Project. You haven't done yet, that yet. Why isn't hasn't that been taken care of like she running it down to him what are you accomplishing and you spinning your wheels you're a fraction of who i knew you were or of who i knew you to be and he is like i, I i'm trying i you know you never loved me <laughs> oh he's feeling mighty mighty bad about the situation so he gets in his mind one of the things that she talked about he can get that accomplished but first and foremost, he got to worry about Jason. Jason is breathing down his neck to get his payment and the extra. Ghost takes it to him and tells him, look, I can't keep doing this. I'm telling you that now. I can't keep doing this. And, and you know, it, it, it. If you guys kill me, if you guys keep bleeding me dry and don't let me run my businesses, you're not going to get another payment because I'm not going to have the money to pay you guys. And the guys are like, uh, you will keep paying me. Well, you know, they Serbian. So they get to talking in Serbian. The one behind him say, uh, I don't think he said it in Serbian. I think he said it in perfect English. Um, leave the black ass. Leave the black ass alone. We've already got trouble dealing with the Irish ass later on today for the pickup. I was like, oh, okay. You guys are really experienced drug dealers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ghost hit that and he's like, hmm, this way he get the idea about Tommy. But first and foremost, we got to meet with Proctor. And Proctor got Dre. And Dre is... <laughs> he is doing this scared face that, that is just cracking me up. I was like, Dre, cut it out. Cut it out. He had so much more savoir faire 
last season. Like, he was mildly attractive. And this season, although he's still fine with that wide-legged cowboy walk that he does, that scared face is a, a major, major, major turnoff for me. But anyway, so... um he tells him, I know you here because you're trying to snitch. I mean, the minute go see him, he get him up against the wall and he's going to kill him with a, 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 a fountain pen, you know. Um, and, you know, <gasps> please don't kill him. This is what Proctor said. We can use him. We can use him. We know the feds using him to try to get us, but we're going to use him to get the feds, like to trick them, like to get you off the hook basically now james want to know what it is what's going on what they got against you they got my daughter which proctor checks out they do have his daughter okay so james tell him what i think is just the dumbest idea <laughs> james tells him i you gonna wear a wire for me and go talk to sax and tell sax i'm gucci and that is what um uh dre does but except in addition to that Proctor gives him permission to tell about the fact that he knows who the witness is. So after he tells Proctor that that James is clean, Proctor is like, child, bye. He about as clean as I am, and I'm dirty as they come. Okay, one, two, you better get me something or you're not going to see your daughter anymore. Okay, and then when he tells him about the witness, he was like, God, dog, who, how does he know about this? Storms out. Now, they've assessed that Stax must be working on his own and doing and working Dre off the books because where are the other federal agents? Like they're 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 not gonna just let you be out there. Now I had already talked about this when I said why hadn't they quarantined Angela's office? Not quarantined, but cordoned off Angela's office as well as her apartment. There doesn't seem to be any agents working this case at all, in my opinion. Angela's case at all. But I digress. So, James is upset about that. Why would he tell that? No, listen. If he tells Stax, Stax is going to go to that person, that witness's house, and then we can finally can find out where the witness is. Okay. So, that's what they do. They have Dre follow Stax to the witness's um, apartment. He gets the witness's address, and later on, he and James go back to the witness's apartment. And when... Um, she opens the door. She is so frightened. She is so scared. It was a good moment. It was a good acting moment. She's going through the apartment. She's so nervous. Now, she saw him shoot her boyfriend point blank in the head. I don't know if she saw him, but she, you know, she saw it happen. And um, she knows Ghost's voice. And she knows that he is can be very, very deadly. So she's very frightened. And Ghost gives her this sort of this half apology, offers her money, um, and tells her, you can have a second chance. I'm trying to take a second chance in my life now. What I did was uh, to you was horrible. I took someone that you love, someone that's second, someone that I love. And I, you know, I'm trying to change my life around, take this money, and you can change your life around too. She is too frightened to even take the money. He throws the money on the table and walks out. Now, what he has done is scared her in his mind enough to where he don't have to kill her. She's so frightened now knowing that he could get to her at any time, at any moment, that she's not going to talk anyway, right? Well, when he walks out, Dre texts um, Stax and tells Stax he's here. He's going to kill the witness. And then when he doesn't, he tells him that um, he didn't kill the witness. You know, uh, call off the, the FBI. So he is playing Proctor and James against Stax. He's playing Stax against them. He's operating in his own interest, Dre is. Um, but he's got to be real, real cool about it because him and him and uh, James go back and get in the truck and pull off. And the FBI pulls up right behind it. I was like, boy, it's more FBI here than it was at the hospital when Angela got killed. <laughs> but it's okay. So he's, he, I mean, it's just by the skin of his teeth. Either way, something can go really, really wrong if one or the other suspects that they are being played. But both of them have to know that they're being played. This is who Dre is. Um, but, again, uh, James has him back in the organization, has him back wearing suits. He's back telling him what to do. It's like he's his sidekick now, his assistant or whatever. He's 
letting Dre back in on all of everything. I, it's it's so off-putting to me because I'm like, if anything, you should be snuffing Dre out. Like, but okay, everybody's serving their own interests. Now, mind you, he's got this little business um, that his inside Angela has told him. His inside Angela has got him to thinking about the fact that Tommy is still alive and why. If you say you love me, why is Tommy still alive? Okay. So, he sets up this whole thing with Tate. Tells Tate that... I need you to help me to shut down this street, right? I don't want to help you, James. I don't want to be involved, James. Just do what I ask you to do. If you want money, if you want to have my help still, if you want everything to go smooth, you'll do what I ask you to do. He sets his plan in motion, okay? Has the street locked down. It's supposed to be a gas main leak. Tommy comes up with the crazy idea to use the ambulance. Now, supposedly, Ghost has thought of all of this. He knows Tommy well enough to know what Tommy is going to do. So, Ghost has set Tommy up. Tommy pulls through the crowd. They let let the barriers up. Let Tommy and his fake ambulance in. Ghost sees it all. Now, it's broad daylight. Ghost got on hoodie. Black pants. Black hoodie. Black shoes. Black socks. Black gloves. And, and, and he is crouching and hiding and looking when he sees Tommy come through he takes off running across the street down the grassy knoll to the other side where he has parked his black SUV now he's being watched but we don't know this yet so he speeds off in the truck drives 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 comes to a cross street right at the moment where he sees Tommy crossing with his um, fake ambulance and he rams the front door, front part of the camper, and gets out and starts shooting. Da, 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 da. And they're shooting back. Ka, 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 ka. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody gets killed. Everybody know what took place. Now the guys know that he is in beef with, with a ghost. And at the same time, Tate has two police officers pick ghost up. They take him back to his office where Tate is sitting there and Tate is telling him, I knew you was up to something. I knew you was up to no good and and this, that, and the third. And you can't ruin this for me. I'm running for governor and I don't like the how you moving. Now, once again, we see this sort of machismo from Tate. But it's short-lived because Ghost breaks him all the way down. You don't question me. Get the heck out of my office. First of all, don't ever question me again. Second of all, don't ever come to my office without permission. You don't tell me what to do. I'm doing this for me and you. Now, what you think gonna happen? If I don't do this, this, that, and the third, then this, this, that, and the third is gonna happen. And it's gonna affect a lot of people, including your boys that pick me up. Everybody's got family. Everybody's got somebody that they looking out for. And if I don't make these necessary prunings and cuts and, and do the things I need to do and move like I need to move, then everything and everybody that they love is in jeopardy. And tastes like, oh, oh, I, I didn't realize it was that serious. Really? Get the heck out, Tay. Get the heck out, Tay. What you gonna do? You gonna barbecue or you gonna meal do? Huh? Are you a formidable force or no? Nah? Anyway, Tommy is 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 sugarified he's sugarified like don't like you try to kill me kill me <laughs> you try to kill me kill me meanwhile ghost and, and jason they're at an impasse they're at a complete impasse jason's like listen i why don't i kill tommy for you and you take over all his distribution. He's gonna, you're gonna do double and triple what he's doing. And Ghost is like, I'm out of the game. I don't do that no more. I told you I'm trying to be legit. I'm trying to be straight. And that's final. Jason just laughs and walks off. I was like, oh, okay. Everybody got a target on their back. Everybody got a target on their back. Okay, we also see where Tasha goes into Garrity's office and she's called herself looking for ghosts. She want to tell on ghosts. She want to tell on how he tried to take her baby's money and that ain't right. And, boo -boo 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 -boo. and Ramona Garrity tells her, girl, suck it up. Count it all joy. Get your little business and grow. Okay, it is her goal to get Tasha on out of the way. Now, not in presence because they need Tasha to stand alongside Ghost so they can look like the Obamas. Okay, in theory. But at the same time, she needs Tasha to divorce all emotions from 
James. Because she want James for herself. That's what she want. She want James all to herself. We do get to hear that Ghost admits that he killed Silver. We do get to hear him admit that. We do get to see where Proctor, he and his ex-junkie wife come come to full blows. The, the information that was on the unicorn bug that's on his daughter's book bag is not really yielding a lot. <clears throat> She does mention that her daughter, Elisa Marie, said something about a scary white guy named Tommy. So he making a note of that, Stax is, but he don't have nothing foundationally on this, on this, on this wiretap. Now the wiretap can never be used in a court of law. It can't be because it's legally obtained. Meanwhile, she gets home and uh, Proctor is waiting there with their daughter. She gets the mail out, comes inside, and he's just talking like regular. She gets the news that she failed the bar exam. And um, she gets upset and immediately goes to find her drugs. Her daughter's upstairs and she gets the drugs and she is on 10. Like she has had way too much. And she is, you know, in the living room and she's going over and she's, you know, high speed regurgitating and root the law. And, and, and I think I, I know where I went wrong. I know I messed up. I know what I messed up. And, and he was like, how much have you had? How many lines have you done? Now the daughter is the one that called him and told him mama is acting wookie do whack a do again. And I need you to come over here. How many lines have you had? And she is just like, listen, 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 listen to what I'm trying to tell you. And she, and he was like, what's going on with you? She said, call 911. I can't call 911 because if I call 911, girl, they going to know you was doing these drugs. And this is going to be, they have to report everything. And this is going to mess everything. Just give me some help. And he goes to dial the phone and he sees her going into overdose convulsions. Uh, and he watches her die. And when he watches her die, he says out loud in front of the book bag with the, the, the unicorn listening device inside of it. He says to her, I'm not going to let you take my child. And he watches her die. He watches her die. Now, her, his daughter upstairs. His daughter is upstairs. I was just like, this going to be a whole mess. A whole mess. Now, I want to see Stax get that unicorn bug away from the baby's book bag. Now that old girl is dead and not just hand delivering it to him. We also get to see Tariq making out with Afro Puff, who giving me narc vibes too. She's giving me narc vibes too. Afro Puff and Quentin are giving me narc vibes. But remember, their ultimate goal is to take down... James St. Patrick, a.k.a. Ghost. So it makes sense, although none of this show makes sense, um, that they would go through people that he's supposed to care about, which is Tasha, a.k.a. Quentin the Narc, and Afro Puff, okay, which is Tariq's Narc. I, I, I mean... <sighs> Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. But that is Power Season 6, Episode 4. Uh, why is Tommy still alive? Y'all let me know what you think. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. 